Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update's video. And so in this video, we'll be talking about these two marked disturbances by the National Hurricane Center. So we have that one that is making its way toward the Caribbean. And so it is going to be crossing over uh, into the basin, maybe as we're going to be heading into the end of this week. And then we have another disturbance that is in land of Africa about to emerge off as a tropical wave. And so before I go into details... Alright, so we're going to be starting off talking briefly about that tropical wave that is about to emerge off Africa. Then we'll move to the one that is a concern for the Caribbean. And so looking at the five-day outlook from the National Hurricane Center, we're seeing here that the formation chance is at 20% for this system. And so uh, imminent development of it is not expected. Of course, it's still inland. But once it makes its way into the main development region, into that shaded area, we could see development taking place off the system. So, uh, uh, providing that this hiring dust is not really a problem out there and the shear is also conducive, then we could see gradual development of this disturbance as time goes by. But we'll have to wait and see what's going to be happening with it. And so uh, it is too early to tell where exactly it's going to be going. Will it be turning up, uh, making its way to the Caribbean? It is a bit too early to tell. So we'll see what's going to be happening as time goes by. But as for it on satellite view, here we have it. And we're seeing that we have all this convection noted within the vicinity of that disturbance. And we also see quite a bit of convection south of the Cabo Verde Islands. So uh, we're going to be seeing more of this. We're heading to September now, which is the peak of the hurricane season. So we can definitely anticipate to see more activity like this tropical waves emerging off africa with all of this shower and thunderstorm activity once conditions are favorable and then eventually we could see development so we should definitely be on the lookout for more of this taking place over the next several weeks so we'll see what happens with that system but the main trait of this video is of course this disturbance here and so we're seeing that there is a 20 percent chance for possible development of the system and it is expected to cross over into the caribbean maybe by late tomorrow going to Friday and so uh, it is likely to bring increased rainfall to sections of the Windward Islands and so if you're on the Windward Islands and it has been pretty hot for you guys there uh, hopefully this provides a cool down but obviously nothing major in terms of like flooding or anything of the sort but hopefully this acts as a cool down if you guys have been dealing with a lot of the heat and so as it makes its way into the Caribbean then we could definitely see development within that shaded region the Eastern going to the Central Caribbean. And where will this go afterwards? Is it going to be going... Uh, continuing westward headed to Central America? Will it cross near the vicinity of Jamaica and go into the Gulf or maybe go north of Jamaica, uh, more into Hispaniola and Cuba? So there are a lot of possibilities that are on the table at this time and uh, there is just no certainty right now. So as for satellite imagery though, here we have the system, very disorganized tropical wave right now. However, once it enters a conducive environment, then we will be, uh, definitely be seeing more shower and thunderstorm activity associated with it and so going to the wind shear map now so the various colors indicate the favorability of the shear so the green means that things are favorable the yellow means neutral and the red means unfavorable and so the tropical wave is located right within that region we're seeing that maybe a little bit of moderate shear affecting the system but it'll likely approach uh, more conducive conditions as it makes its way into the Caribbean but there is also that dry air that might be a problem and so speaking of that let's go ahead and look at the dry air and so here we have it so the different colors these yellows oranges and red they indicate the uh, dry air the saharan dust and so we're seeing that there is a bit that is entering the caribbean right now uh, maybe blanketing some islands of the lesser antilles but throughout this section of the main development region we're seeing that there isn't a whole lot and so that might result in a bit of a more favorable environment for the wave about to emerge off africa to develop but as i said we'll see what happens with it but as for the disturbance headed to the caribbean if there is more dry air then there is a decreased chance for development but with less dry air, there is an increased chance. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what GFS is showing. So this is a map showing the isobars as well as the precipitation rate. Uh, and so this is by tomorrow, Thursday, the 25th of August. And so 
Once we see the black lines, the isobars being, being close together in a circular manner with the pressure being at least 10, 13 millibars or lower, we could be looking at a tropical cyclone. So that's what we're looking for here. But by this time, we're seeing that we have all this moisture associated with the system just making its way over the windward islands. And so what is going to be happening with it is GFS expecting development in the Caribbean. So come. Uh, completely contrasting yesterday we're seeing that gfs is now expecting that there will just be a lot of moisture associated with this maybe a lot of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity in the vicinity of hispaniola cuba and jamaica and so going to thursday the first of september so over a week from now gfs is expecting that this will start to get its act together in the northwestern caribbean close to cuba so we see a pressure here of a thousand two millibars but then going to sunday the fourth of september uh, GFS is expecting that this is going to be entering the Gulf and intensifying. And so in some of my previous videos, I mentioned that in the last few days of August over the past few years, we've had at least one major system develop within that time. So last year, it was Ida. In 2020, it was Laura. In 2019, it was Dorian. So uh, this is something that is a bit repetitive. And so we might see it happening again this year. So we'll definitely have to keep an eye on this system. And so as for the Icon model, Icon is not really expecting a whole lot of development uh, compared to what they were expecting yesterday. So by Monday, the 29th, the model is showing that low pressure area being uh, to the south southwest of Jamaica thereabouts maybe approaching uh, Central America. So it seems as though Icon is taking this on a more westward-like track across the area. And so Euro is not really expecting development. So let's go ahead and take a look at the humidity map. And so this is tomorrow on the 25th of August and we're seeing these teals. So the teal indicates uh, moisture, meanwhile the browns indicate dry air. And so we see this little pocket of dry air that is noted ahead of the system in the Eastern Caribbean. As time goes by, going to Wednesday of next week on the 31st, we see all that moisture across the Central Caribbean. Uh, and then going to the 3rd of uh, September, next Saturday, we're seeing that we have all this moisture in the Northwestern Caribbean associated with that wave so you are not really expecting development of the system here so let's wait and see what's going to be happening if the model is going to be uh, changing and expecting more development of this but again development is all going to be dependent on the favorability of the environment and the best conditions to have are uh, favorable wind shear warm ocean waters which are already there as well as a moist environment so we're going to be seeing what is going to be taking place with it as time goes by. Uh, but of course, the next name to be used is Danielle. And we have two disturbances out there. So let's see what's going to be happening in the coming days. But of course, I'll be keeping you guys updated on what is going on out there. And so that is really it for this update video. And if you found it to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up. And you can share your thoughts in the comments or as a question. I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be weatherwise.